The article that we decided to research was a website called Y-Clone. It discussed the merits of cloning, as well as some of the ways it could be used. It is an intriguing article by the Genetic Science Learning Centre, and talks about some of the points that we will discuss further on in this video. First off, it is important to understand what cloning is. Cloning is a creation of genetically identical organisms. This can be done naturally in the wild or artificially where humans use lab equipment to produce an exact genetic copy of another animal. The most common form of cloning for animals is SCNT or somatic cell nuclear transfer. A somatic cell is any cell in the body except for the reproductive cells, which are called gametes. From here, the nucleus of the somatic cell is removed and inserted into a nucleated oocyte, which is an egg cell that has had its nucleus removed. Once this has occurred, scientists generally use electricity to fuse the nucleus and the egg cell together. This result is a gamete which has had identical DNA to the original cell. The new gamete starts to multiply as, it, as if it had been fertilised. It will continue multiplying until it becomes a blastocyst, which will then be inserted into a surrogate mother and will result in a genetically identical replica of the nucleus donor. Problems have occurred when people have tried cloning. This could happen during the cloning process or the treatment of the clone due to the fact it, that it is a clone and this may damage it. Dolly had aged prematurely and died at the age of six years. This may have been because she was already the clone of a six-year-old sheep. Dolly was the first mammal to be cloned by humans. This occurred in 1996 and now has many possible uses. Here is a short video taken of the sheep Dolly. She was the first mammal ever to be cloned artificially, but as you can see, she is rather overweight due to the fact that people have fed her treats because she is the first clone. Scientists say a clone was created from a single cell taken from the udder of a sheep. The embryo was then implanted in a surrogate, making an exact genetic copy of its so-called mother. Scientists hail it as a triumph for research in aging, medicine, and genetics. So why is the discovery of cloning non-agricultural animals important? Well, with this technology, many opportunities could be opened up to medical research, testing, as well as reviving deceased pets or important animals. Cloning would allow for mass production of test animals, which could be used to research many different diseases, which would progress our medical resources. This would mean mass producing test animals. Cloning could also be used to mass produce stem cells, which in use with our current medical technology, used to treat many conditions and diseases. With cloning, it could allow the survival of many endangered animals and revive many extinct animals. Cloning could also be used to revive deceased pets, which are of high sentimental value to families. So how many people does this benefit? Around Australia, there are over 5.7 million household pets and over 24 million pets. This could help for those who really love the deceased pet and want to bring it back to life. Currently, over 100 million mice and rats are killed in American experiments every year. If cloning technology was implemented for mice, this would mean that the perfect mice would be chosen and mass produced. What does this mean for endangered animals? Currently, there are 16,306 species are endangered around the world. Cloning would help these endangered animals to reproduce and hopefully keep the species alive. Cloning has many problems. Some include the cost of cloning, the success rate of cloning, and how much resources it would take to successfully produce a clone. There could also be the abuse of cloning, 
where pet owners start to abuse the animals and forget the importance of life. Many believe that cloning is unethical, which is a major issue. Many believe that cloning is changing life cycles and toy models.